Would you guys be willing to vote, yes or no? It's just a, a quick exercise question. Do people working manual labor jobs need to exercise? Okay, cool. Would you guys mind voting just yes or no on this exercise question? Yes or no, do people working manual labor jobs need to exercise? Okay, cool. Do you mind voting yes or no on this exercise question? Do manual labor workers need to exercise? Thank you, it's just the intro of my YouTube video. No, no worries. Like I'm adding votes, tallying votes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. It's gonna be be real for my intro of my YouTube video. Okay, great, yeah. Oh, that's making me wanna change my vote. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a yes girl. Okay. I'm a yes girl. Thank you guys. I'm just answering this question in my video. It's actually way more shocking than I ever thought. There's a lot of research on it. The answer might surprise you. There's actually a decent amount of research on this topic, but even I was shocked at some of their findings. I'm at a Vicksdale new build construction site, and I've done a lot of manual labor jobs. I've done roofing, painting, moving, lawn care, just to name a few, but I'm also an exercise enthusiast. I have a master's in exercise science, and I've been a strength coach or trainer for over 12 years. And in my experience, even though I love exercise, if after the end of a long day of manual labor work, someone told me I still need to go exercise, I'd be so confused. What part of me climbing up and down ladders, on my feet all day, pushing and pulling heavy equipment, makes you think I have to go to the gym and do that all again for another hour? I'm telling you this so you know how serious I'm gonna take this question. I'm gonna give you a fair, research-based, evidence-cited answer to the question, do manual labor workers need to exercise? The first step to answering this question is to understand why would anyone need to exercise? Put simply, you live a longer and better life. But let me give you a crazy example of that. In 2018, there was a meta-analysis, which is just an analysis of a bunch of different studies. They looked at 1.44 million adults and saw that exercise significantly reduced your risk of getting 13 different types of cancer. Here's the different cancers. And just so you know, these studies have to control for variables like age, socioeconomics, whether the participants were smokers or not. On that same note of helping you live longer, there's even more substantial evidence that physical activity decreases your risk of cardiovascular disease. That causes things like heart attack and stroke. If you don't exercise and you start to exercise just a little bit, that small increase in physical activity has been shown to reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease in half. And just to throw this out there, some people think we exercise to lose weight and then that weight loss is what results in health benefits. And that's not true. This, this has been very well researched. Exercise on its own results in health benefits. It doesn't need to be accompanied with losing a single pound. Exercise improves your blood pressure, blood sugar regulation, bone density, mood, sleep, pain management, strength, power, cardiovascular fitness. You get it. You live a longer and better life if you exercise. But wouldn't you imagine that a manual labor worker exercises enough at work to reach all of those health benefits mentioned? Luckily, you don't need to guess. Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna go yes. Okay, cool. Now, would it change your mind if I told you that they have studied this with like accelerometers and observational studies? and they have compared the physical activity of different occupations like agriculture workers, lawn care, all, a bunch of different manual labor jobs compared to other occupations. And they found out that on average, they were getting almost three times as many steps in their workday. Wow. And they were burning over double the amount of calories. Would that change your mind, yes or no? Okay, no surprise. Manual labor workers like craftsmen and lawn care get way more physical activity at their job than other occupations. But is it enough? 
And who even determines what enough exercise is? Well, the American College of Sports Medicine set some weekly exercise recommendations. Based off of a large amount of studies and publications, they determined you could get a lot of the health benefits associated with exercise if you get at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity cardio and two days of resistance training each week. Let me break that down for you. Sometimes it's difficult to picture how much exercise are those recommendations really asking you to do? I'll give you an example. A relatively fit individual would need to jog for 30 minutes five days a week to meet the 150 minutes of moderate intensity cardio. I specify relatively fit because technically a less fit individual wouldn't even need to jog. They could just do a brisk walk for 30 minutes five days a week and that would still be enough intensity to get their heart rate up into that moderate zone. They still need to do the same duration, 30 minutes, five days a week. And as for the resistance training recommendations, it's a lot easier to meet those than it sounds. You have to hit every major muscle group two days a week. Well, I've seen lifting training protocols where they meet those recommendations, every major muscle group, with a lift under 20 minutes. So again, 30 minutes, five days a week of cardio, and two days of 20 minutes of resistance training. And no surprise to me, in my experience doing manual labor work, blue collar workers working physically active jobs meet the recommendations. So boom, is that the end of the video? They meet the recommendations, they probably get all the associated health benefits, and therefore, outside of work, manual labor workers don't need to exercise. Well, wrong and here's where the crazy twist happens before i explain this dilemma i have to define three terms understanding these three terms will let you get a much better grasp at the problem at hand i've been using these three terms interchangeably and that's not correct there's a difference between physical activity exercise and fitness physical activity is just movement and expending energy. Whereas exercise is a subset of physical activity, you're still moving and expending energy, but for the sake of exercise. So it's purposeful and structured. And lastly, fitness is really cardiorespiratory fitness. It's objective and measurable. It gives you a picture of your, the health and strength of your heart, lungs, and vascular system. I'm gonna take those three terms and I'm gonna graph their relationship with health outcomes. We've already covered this. Doing moderate intensity physical activity reduces your risk of dying. Notice, at some point, doing more physical activity starts to give you less significant reductions in risk. Researchers notice this diminishing return beyond a certain point, and that's why the recommendations start at 150 minutes because you can get a ton of the risk reductions even at this point. But also notice, it's still beneficial to get more than 150 minutes of cardio. That's why the recommendations say at least 150. Now, what if you're exercising at a higher intensity? Well, the recommendations address that too. If you do vigorous intensity physical activity, your risk of dying drops off even faster, meaning you can do about half as much vigorous intensity cardio compared to moderate intensity and still get the same health benefits. The recommendations reflect this and say, hey, if you exercise at a high intensity, you only have to do 75 minutes a week rather than 150. This is because high intensity is such a huge stressor that it's becomes a potent stimulus for physiological adaptations. If you're training above 70% heart rate max, your body knows it needs to start improving a bunch of health metrics. One of those health metrics being cardiorespiratory fitness. I just wanna map cardiorespiratory fitness onto this graph to show you how important heart and lung health is to longevity. In case you forgot from the beginning of the video, 
If you go from the worst percentile in fitness level to the 25th percentile, that drops your risk in half. So my big takeaway from this graph is something is better than nothing. Honestly, the worst shape you're in means you're the person with the absolute most to gain. Just a small improvement in your fitness level, massive health improvements. Okay, back to the crazy twist. Study after study kept concluding, even though manual labor workers were surpassing the recommended amount of physical activity, they were not seeing the health improvements that should have been associated with that much physical activity. This inconsistency was so evident that researchers started calling it the occupational versus leisure time physical activity paradox. Exercise outside of work, huge health benefits. But if your job is exercising, no health benefits. They outlined many reasons why occupational physical activity and leisure time physical activity are so different and how those differences result in different health outcomes. I'm gonna take all of their reasons and put them into three categories. These are my three reasons why manual labor workers are missing important health benefits from the type of physical activity they do at work. The first reason is the lack of cardiorespiratory fitness improvements. Remember, cardiorespiratory fitness is a hugely important health metric for increasing longevity and decreasing health risk. So, if the type of physical activity they're doing at work isn't making their heart, lungs, and vascular system stronger and healthier, then they're missing out on one of the most important adaptations from exercise. Just from the graphs I showed you earlier, you might be able to guess why occupational physical activity doesn't improve cardiorespiratory fitness. Remember, one of the best improvers of cardiorespiratory fitness is intensity. And what might a manual labor worker working eight to 10 hours a day avoid? High intensity. Whereas someone exercising outside of work for 30 minutes to an hour doesn't mind spiking their heart rate above 70% here and there. The other two reasons why exercising at work and exercising for leisure time are so different are what I'm going to categorize as overtraining and under recovering. You're doing asymmetric, unbalanced, repetitive movements. You're holding heavy objects in static postures. You work in physically stressful environments, maybe heat or non-ideal conditions. You work for so long that it's hard to physically recover in time for the next day, causing chronic inflammation. Great, I can't get my heart rate up because I work for so long and I'm forced to overtrain and under recover. I'm screwed, right? Not so fast. If you take anything away from this video, please make it this. Manual labor workers are exercising. You are endurance and strength athletes. If you prioritize recovery and treat your body like the athlete it is, I promise you're gonna to progress towards health and wellness that will make other occupations jealous. Every occupation has its health hazard. If movement is part of your job description, you should consider yourself lucky. If you work a desk job that makes you sit for eight or more hours a day, that can be very detrimental to your health. One study showed you would have to exercise for 60 to 75 minutes a day just to erase the bad effects of that much sedentary behavior. Manual labor workers don't need to exercise for that long, but what do they need to do? Finally, this brings us to the answer, do manual labor workers need to exercise? Let's review the facts. They're already very physically active at work, but they don't see the health benefits because of three main reasons, lack of cardiorespiratory fitness, overtraining, and under-recovering. So, do they need to exercise? Yes, but not like everyone else. They just need to address those three problem areas, and to be honest, this is gonna be very time efficient. They don't need to exercise very long. Let me spell out the ideal workout program for a manual labor worker. First and foremost, they need to prioritize recovery. 
that's eating and sleeping like the athlete they are. They don't need to diet and restrict. They need to stay hydrated and eat enough of the right stuff to sustain them in all the activity they do each day. And trust me, I get it. Just prioritize recovery is way easier said than done. But it's the next two forms of exercise that manual labor workers should focus on that I was saying are short and time efficient. Now, how do you improve cardio fitness and performance, decrease injuries and movement dysfunctions in short workouts? And I keep emphasizing short, quick, time efficient because that's important for manual labor workers. They're already overtrained and under recovered. We're not trying to stress the body out more. A program that prioritizes doing the maximum with the minimum is really important here. Well, luckily enough, interval training has been shown to improve cardiorespiratory fitness even in very short workouts. Remember, fitness responds really well to high intensity and interval training is just alternating back and forth between low intensity cardio and high intensity cardio. Also, remember I'm saying they're short workouts. I've never said they're easy workouts. If you wanna test your cardio fitness level and then start some short workouts, short, not easy workouts, to improve it, I have a video, links above and in the description below. In this video, I take you through a three minute step test to determine what your cardio fitness level is. And then the last half of the video is dedicated to showing you how to improve it. You choose any cardio modality and I take you through some effective interval training programs. Lastly, the final exercise type or workout program that I would have any manual labor worker focus on is preventing injuries and increasing performance. Again, I have a three minute video that I take you through three stretches, three shoulder care exercises, three hip movements, and three core strengthening exercises that are progressible for any level. So, do they need to exercise? Yes, some cardio intervals and some strength training corrective work. If you're looking for that exact training program, it's free on my website. All of my workout programs are completely free. Training programs for any level and training programs for a bunch of different training goals. Reach out if you have any questions or if you're looking for an online strength coach. And again, at minimum, if you want some structure some science and accountability added to your workout routine, please reach out or check out my free program library. Thank you.